Diablo 4 just came out, okay? And today, I'm gonna be doing a review on Diablo 4. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it okay? Is it like every other Diablo game you've ever played before? Let's find out. My name is Magneti, and I welcome you to the Mothership. Today, like I said, we're gonna be going over Diablo 4. And for those of you who are returning to my channel, I've recreated my standard for game reviews. I've come up with a new standard. There's five topics. Each topic is worth 20 points, and then I'll also provide a IGN or Games Radar review at the end for you as well, so that you can compare my review to a quote-unquote more professional review. So the five things we're gonna be talking about is one, gameplay, Two, presentation, which is going to be graphics, visuals, audio, and sound design. Number three is story and narrative. Number four is progression and replayability. And number five is multiplayer and online experience. And then I'll give you my final thoughts. Let's start off with an overview of what Diablo 4 is. So Diablo 4 takes place exactly 50 years after Diablo 3. It is very similar to Diablo 3 and is your classic ARPG or action RPG, just like any other. Right. So the very well known classic Blizzard Entertainment is the developer and publisher for Diablo 4, as you probably already knew. Other than that, really, I don't think there's a whole lot to say about Diablo 4. Very highly anticipated game, and a lot of people that are already interested in it pretty much already know everything about it. Anybody that's not really sure about it, I will let you know that it's a demonic RPG or action RPG. There's going to be a lot of hack slash shoot shit and destroy in this game, although it is very fun. So it's imagine an RPG from almost a top down view and a very complicated skill tree, just like any other RPG and lots of blood, gore and blowing shit up or destroying shit or slaying shit. However you want to look at it right now, I may be outing myself here and that's OK because I'm trying to find my crowd. Anyway, that's not important. I have not actually played Diablo one or two. I believe I played Diablo three like a demo a while back. So this review is going to be kind of more biased towards those people that haven't ever played Diablo before. Just wanted to point that out there. So as last to mention for my overview is that I personally don't see any significant features or innovations that Diablo 4 has set forth that kind of sets it apart from any other game or any other Diablo specifically. But again, I haven't played any other Diablo before. So all right, after the overview, let's jump right into the review, okay? I'm going to try and be brisk with these so that you can get my overall general opinion as quickly as possible. So, number one, gameplay. So I know I said I was going to be rating these out of 20, but more so what I meant is I'm going to double the number so that it equals 20 when I get there, right? So anyway, gameplay, number one, I give that an 8.5 out of 10. The reason for that specific rating is that I feel Diablo 4's gameplay aspects, or more so the game loop, is kind of redundant. It's a little too redundant, right? Every game loop is supposed to be redundant. Redundant, but it's not supposed to feel this redundant, I feel like. Anyway, gameplay mechanics, controls, and overall feel of the game. Fantastic, honestly. Gameplay mechanics are really good. This game launched really smooth. The controls are well thought out, and actually it's more geared towards console players as well. And the overall feel of the game is very polished. I don't feel like this game is unfinished or anything like you might expect from a Blizzard release for 70 plus dollars, right? So the core gameplay loop, like I mentioned, is a little redundant. And if you don't know what a gameplay loop is, it's basically just the aspects of the game that make the game fun, makes the player engaged, and it kind of repeats itself. So like Call of Duty, for example, same objective every time you load into a game. Generally, you want to win, right? So that's kind of what a gameplay loop is. And personally, for me, I feel like Diablo 4 is a little redundant, and that's kind of because the engagement through NPC, which we'll talk a little bit more about in uh, development and progression, I feel like the NPC and storytelling could have been done a little better. I feel very unengaged when I'm learning about the story of Diablo 4, and that might also be because I'm not an expert or a veteran Diablo player. Now, there aren't really any major standout features or gameplay elements that make this game unique to me. I think that as an action RPG, that is kind of the uniqueness of it because ARPGs are a mostly unique category, in my opinion. So there's that. So again, 8.5 out of 10, pretty good. Number two is presentation. Now, again, this is going to be graphics, visuals, audio, and sound design. Now, for this, I'm honestly going to give it a solid 9.5 out of 10, and that 0.5 points is coming from the overbearingly loud action part. And that's really it. Otherwise, personally for me, I'm not an expert audiophile, but it sounds really good. I feel like everything is really well put together, of course, other than the NPC storytelling kind of interaction, but I'm not really attributing that to an audio issue. The graphics are phenomenal. It's not anything like realism, but it, it is really well put together. 
The art style is very much a kind of a clash between realism and fantasy. So it's kind of a, a really unique aspect in art for that aspect. The visual realism, like I kind of just explained, is kind of in the middle. The amount of detail that Blizzard put into this game is pretty decent, I guess. It's not anything crazy, but I feel like there is a lot of, you know, like the trees are very well done and well placed. There's a lot of barrels and other kind of destroyable things that are put into the game. There's a lot of little details here and there. Nothing crazy incredible, but it feels just right, you know. The immersion in the game is pretty good as well. I do, over a long period of gaming, kind of get tired of the redundancy yet again, as I'm mentioning. But other than that, the audio and visual immersion is fantastic. So as I've mentioned multiple times, really the only strengths or weaknesses I could say about the graphical or audio in this game would be a weakness is the overly loud and aggressive sound effects and action effects, etc. It's kind of overbearing, especially if you're playing with friends or you're just chatting in a Discord server. And the strength, I would say, is that the way that they put the graphics and the visuals together, it really honestly does make it very immersive and very fantasy, how I feel it should be. Moving into number three, story and narrative. I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. And again, this is kind of where I'm going to talk about that issue with that connection and the immersion within the story. The reason I'm giving it a 7 out of 10 is because I feel like the story so far is engaging as a whole. However, when I'm playing for extended periods, it does feel as though I get kind of like skip, 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 kind of like don't care about like really what's happening, if that makes sense. So the story and the plot, it's again 50 years after Diablo 3. You are a adventurer. In the beginning, you kind of get lost and lose your horse sort of ordeal. You get rescued by yourself, basically. And you're just kind of a lone wanderer adventurer. Try to help out the local area. There's not a whole lot of backstory for me that maybe I'm missing something from the other games. So I don't really understand a lot of like where this person came from or who we really are. But I think building upon what it is in the beginning is done fairly decently. I think the storytelling techniques are where it really struggles, in my personal opinion. I feel as though just the conversations are not engaging enough, and there's not quite enough backstory about our specific character and the specific locations within Sanctuary that we're operating out of, which, again, that might be to the fault of my own and not playing Diablo 3, because I know Sanctuary has been a part of all of the Diablo games. So maybe that's kind of where I'm lacking the backstory part. But anyway, moving on. The quality of the writing, dialogue, and character development overall is pretty well. I think the character development especially so far that I've encountered with the NPCs seems to do pretty well. Character development has been mostly minute, but also very unique. It's kind of hard to explain, but so far what I felt is that it looks really good. Now for the writing and dialogue, again, kind of the same thing. It just kind of feels a little unengaging. The writing and dialogue is just kind of like boring and monotonous. I'm not really sure personally how they could make it better. I just know that it doesn't feel great. All right, number four, moving into progression and replayability. Now, this one takes a hit in the replayability aspect for me personally, and that's because the game levels with you, which is cool. I really enjoy that. There's a lot of love hate with that. So in my mind, replayability means once you beat the game, like how fun is it to replay? And for me personally, I don't foresee this being a game that I'm going to constantly want to come back to and replay like every class and max out every class. Like, for example, Borderlands has such an intriguing and deep story that I came back every single game I came back, well, except for the pre-sequel, and personally, that that's another story. Anyway, I came back, played every single class, and maxed out each class, and I just don't feel like Diablo 4 has that quite that connection. I think it could be fun to play as different classes, but I don't know that I'd want to max them to level 100, maybe to level 50, but not level 100. Now, with progression, I think Diablo 4 does it really well. Progression, there's a lot of drops in the game. A lot of it is just kind of luck, but I think that that the way that I've been able to play my playthrough and get the pacing down, it was a lot of fun so far with how the pacing for drops and upgrading and doing these different things in the game, buying necklaces, making next level stones and potions. It's just, I feel like the progression, although it felt kind of slow in the very beginning, once you get to like level 10, it really takes off from there. And then I'm sure it'll plateau again once I get to 30 or 40, but it just feels very balanced overall. I think the only big notable feature that I would consider a big replayability aspect is going to be one, the different characters, and then two, the RNG. I think the RNG with the drops and everything is kind of make it like, oh, like it, it's kind of grindy, but it's going to be like, oh, I want to get this XYZ thing to perfect my build, et cetera, et cetera. But other than that, 
I think overall, the progression and replayability is decent. I got a 7 out of 10 for it. I don't know if I said that yet, but 7 out of 10 for progression and replayability. Those three points really came from the replayability and maybe a little bit from the progression, but overall really well. If you found this video useful so far, go ahead and leave a comment down below of what kind of video you want to see me do next. Thanks. All right, moving on to number five, multiplayer and online experience. Now for this one, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10, and that two points really comes down from the fact that the multiplayer experience is kind of, I really don't even know how to describe it to be completely honest. It's kind of grindy, but not in the sense of like going back and doing things over and over again, but grindy as in the sense that it doesn't really fit well. I feel like the multiplayer experience that they developed, they didn't keep in mind the aspects of high level players playing with low level players, although they did implement the level matching type aspect. And I just feel like when you have a party of more than two, it really is just overwhelming with the amount of DPS you get. The amount of DPS is just so high when you have more than two or even like if you have a full party of four people, the damage per second in this game is you're just going to be able to kill anything in 0.2 seconds. Now, when it comes to bosses and world bosses, that's a much different story, but still, it's kind of doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Now, the community aspects and connectivity is great. I think they came out with clans. I don't know if that's been a thing, but that was awesome, and I really like that. The connectivity was fine. I haven't really had any major issues since a couple of the patches with connectivity on multiplayer. The multiplayer mode is, in general, very simple and easy. Matchmaking and social interactions, super simple. I like the very mild MMO type style it has, and I'm sure that that's been a Diablo thing for a while. So again, overall, 8 out of 10. Overall multiplayer experience, pretty good, but it's just a little overwhelming with a lot of people. I think it's a really good duo type game with how they implemented it. All right, so final thoughts here. So overall, my impressions of Diablo 4, really, really good game, really solid. Honestly, kind of surprised by Blizzard Entertainment what they've put out here today. It was really, really, it's really fun so far. I'm thoroughly enjoying it, and I look forward to doing a Necromancer build video in the future. If you want to see that, leave a comment down below letting me know. My final recommendation for this game, go ahead and buy it. Personally, if you're not huge into cosmetics or you don't care to get early access, which I think it's already out anyways, you can go ahead and just buy the plain version and just be totally fine with that. I think specifically people who enjoyed the previous Diablos will very much enjoy this Diablo, no questions asked. And anyone who's really into RPGs but hasn't yet gotten the chance to explore ARPGs, I think Diablo 4 would be a really good intro ARPG for you because it's very well-rounded. Okay. All right. So I'm glad you stuck around to the end because my final score is 82 out of 100. So that's an 82%. That's pretty damn good. I would give that a nice solid B plus, I believe is what that is. So if you compare my rating to IGN, IGN gave it a nine out of 10, which is only eight points above what I gave it. And Games Radar gave it a five out of five stars. So that's about 18 points above what I rated it. Something I didn't consider in my video is PVP, which is another aspect to the multiplayer, which I haven't gotten yet to really see or look into, so that could definitely give it more points on my end, depending on how it looks. Again, thanks for sticking around to the end to see what I rated it and to get the full value out of the video. Other than that, stick around for more gaming news, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!